Hi, my name is Rubidium Wu. I'm a writer, director, and cinematographer, originally from Australia, but now working in the States. Today we're going to talk about the different shooting modes of the Sigma FP and how they compare as far as resolution, bit depth, and compression. Resolution is how many pixels the camera is capturing in your image. It's usually measured in how many thousands of pixels along the widest side of the image. So you have 2K or 4K. 2K is the same as 1080p, 1080 being the amount of pixels on the shortest size of the image. Because it deals with the amount of data stored, resolution has the greatest effect on the size of your footage and how much footage you can fit on a given card or drive. Next is color depth. Color depth is how many variations of color the camera is capturing. This is measured in bit depth, either 8-bit, 16.7 million colors, 10-bit, 1 billion colors, or 12-bit, 68.7 billion colors. 8-bit, 10-bit, and 12-bit all record the same kind of color, the whole spectrum of the color wheel. The main difference is how many gradations or very subtle variations they record between the colors. So if you're shooting something that's all blue or all green, you'll get far more variation when you go from 8-bit to 10-bit. You will get even more variation from 10-bit to 12-bit, but at that point you're up against the limit of the human eye. We can't detect as many subtle variations. Somewhere this makes a big difference is in skin tone. Skin tone is a very specific range between red and yellow, and being able to record a billion variations of skin tone, as you can in 10-bit, rather than just 16 million variations in skin tone, as you can in 8-bit, actually makes a huge difference in how lifelike your image can be. The last variation is compression, or lack thereof. Most cameras compress the footage to get it onto the card in a realistic way, otherwise you'd only get about a minute or so on a gigabyte card. A raw image is one that isn't compressed and so has the maximum amount of data and the fewest amount of what's called compression artifacts. Compression artifacts appear when the camera throws away information from the image in order to get it onto a smaller card. This isn't really noticeable when you're watching the footage on the camera or the computer, but once you start color grading the footage, compression artifacts can become very noticeable, especially when you apply things like sharpening. The Sigma FP has three modes of compression. Raw DNG, which is almost uncompressed, and it's just a series of still frames that your non-Lydian editing software can then turn into footage. It has two variations of H.264 stored in an MOV container. The first one is All I, which is a reasonably lossless compression. And the second one is GOP or GOP, which is a much lossier, much more compressed format. The Sigma FP at 4K, or 4,000 pixels along the longest edge of the footage, stores raw DNG at 2,000 megabits per second, which is the most suitable for broadcast, feature film, or archival footage. It stores MOV All Eye at 440 megabits a second, and MOV GOP at 120 megabits a second which is still 10 times the rate that the typical YouTube video is compressed at. Keep in mind that it's always possible to record at a higher data rate for your footage and then downgrade the footage uh, to distribute it. But if you record at a low data rate, it's impossible to get that quality back again. For this reason, this camera really shines in its uh, raw DNG format and is able to get images as good as any other camera on the market. The downside of this is that you'll get much less footage on a card or on an external drive. And you'll get almost 20 times the amount of footage shooting GOP MOV on the same card as you would DNG. Here we're gonna look at the same footage shot in 4K 12-bit, 4K 10-bit, 4K 8-bit, and then the same scene again shot in 4K all I and 4K long gop or GOP. As you can see, there's not a huge drop in quality between the DNG from 12 to 10, but there's a noticeable loss in quality from 10 to 8. Then you go down to the all I quick time 
and you start to lose more and then more again down to longer. This is reflected in the data rates of the footage. All of these options are also available in 1080 or half the size of the 4K. That is our look at the Sigma FP and how the different shooting modes compare with one another and the quality versus size trade-off that you get when dealing with compression versus bit depth versus size. In a perfect world, we would shoot everything at least 4K 12-bit cinema DNG. But that would mean going through cards and hard drives very, very quickly and might leave you no space to get the shot that you want when it comes along. You always have to balance the needs of post-production versus the needs of shooting. And with a little bit of planning and a little bit of testing, you can find the right balance for your film. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you got something out of this video. You can find out more about the Sigma FP in the website below.